Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. So I will be um, performing the ANOVA uh, in SPSS trial version using the p-value approach. Um, I got uh, my uh, values, observed values, or data set from sengage.com. So I will be using the Apple Overchard experiment from peers of the University of Kent Canterbury, England. So I will be presenting my entire screen. So, uh, so it will be visible for the uh, for the entire video that um, what we what um, I will be um, showing in my um, computer. So um, this is the values that I have performed and um, the materials that I have um, were, um, used uh, is already um, analyzed here in this um, file. So I will be showing uh, the p-value approach on a one-way analysis of variance using the SPSS trial version, which is task 6 for um, an advanced statistics under um, Garcia. So uh, this one actually um, discusses the type of uh, five types of rootstock which were used in the orchard grafting experiment among apples. So there are five um, treatments and there are um, eight observed values, um, samples for each treatment. So um, the um, this uh, experiment actually hypothesizes that for, uh, for the null hypothesis that the means of the five treatments are equal for all the five treatments and that uh, for the alternative hypothesis, we will be um, assuming that one or more of the means of the treatments are not equal or the same for all the five treatments. So we have to, before we perform the um, ANOVA in SPSS, so we will be checking for assumptions first First, it's that all the dependent variables, all 40 of the samples of the values that for extension of growth in centimeters here should be um, are, should be on continuous level internal interval ratio. So this is the values and it is also set as scalar in um, SPSS. Next is that um, the um, independent variables should, should uh, just as the five types of the rootstock used in the ultra drafting experiments should be in categorical or independent groups. So the, uh, that means that they are not the same uh, from the same grafted plant samples and that is they are used for all five treatments but rather from different grafted um, apple plants. So we have here the proof of this one. So each um, this is, uh, this actually stands for the uh, type of treatment uh, performed for this test. Okay, so um, experiment. So next is we have the independence of observations and that we set for the level of significance, which we set at 5%. Uh, we will also be using one way enough of analysis because we have five independent groups um, or treatments Next is that the decision rule uh, is to reject the null hypothesis if the p-value, which is the significant value in the ANOVA to evolve from SPSS, is less than 0 0.05. If it's not, then that means the test has failed to reject the null hypothesis. Then next is we check for the significant out outliers using the z-scores. So to generate the z-scores, we click for analyze descriptive statistics, then descriptives, then um, transfer the um, dependent variable into this uh, box for variables. Then we uh, check for save standardized values as variables. Then we uh, click OK. So for this one, it will generate this. The descriptive statistics so this is the descriptive statistics which is the minimum uh, it shows the total number of the samples that were involved in the experiment and the one uh, we have the values which are the minimum and maximum values that we have for the observed values from the samples 
and we have also the mean of the samples and we have also the standard deviation so this is the spread of the variables notice that it is quite large because the the um the values with for the observed values um, of the dependent variables are also quite large so this is just fine so we also will be checking for this one the z-score here so this is the z-score values so in the z-score values um, it is an outlier if it is greater than um, positive three or a negative three so since we don't have a negative three or a positive three so this means that we are okay and we can proceed to the next assumption so the next assumption that we will be checking for is that the dependent variables should be normally uh, distributed so this is our um uh, this is what we should be looking for. So this is the test of normality for the um, the Kolmogorov and Smirnov Shapiro Wilk. So we will be setting out to um, generate this one in SPSS. Okay, so to uh, generate this values for if what to determine whether or not the dependent variables are normally distributed. So we. Uh, click analyze then uh, toggle to descriptive statistics then um, click explore then in explore we will be transferring the uh, value uh, your dependent variable into the dependent list here box for this one and we will be transferring um, um, we will be clicking for um, plots after that, we will check for uh, normality plots with tests, this one. So then click continue and click OK. So for this one, it will generate the um, this one, the test for of normality. And this is the values that we have. Uh, we have the um, minimum and maximum, the standard deviation, the variance. It has already computed the variance. The uh, median 2, it has already been computed. The interquartile range is also computed. And we have the kurtosis and the skewness. Okay. So we have also here the Shapiro Wilk. Okay. So for this one, we have a significance of 0.2 and a 0.679 uh, for Shapiro Wilk, and we have for Kolmogorov Smirnov. So this means that because this is um, greater than. 0 0.05 so that means the data is normally distributed so the values for the dependent variables are actually normally distributed so that means we can proceed to analyzing again another for another assumption so we can proceed to another one so this time um, instead of descriptive statistics we'll be able to be um, tog, uh, toggling to compare means to check for the homogeneity of the variance test using the Levine's test. So Levine's test can be found here in one way ANOVA. So we will be transferring the dependent variables into the dependent list box and the independent variable into the factor box. So after that, we will be clicking for um, options. Then under options, we will be checking for homogeneity of variance test. So that uh, this will be the one. Then we will click for OK and we will click again OK. So for this one, we will be seeing the values, which is for this one, um, the um, this linear bar line that is increasing. So um, notice that all the values here are actually wrapped around this uh, line so that is fairly normal so there is a positive um, uh, this is positive this means that it is positive so it's actually if the other variable is increasing then the um, expected um, normal is actually also increasing too and this one is actually also fairly normal too because this is under this one except for this value here Right, so this is our box plot. So the box plot shows us the um, upper um, upper twenty five percent and the lower twenty five percent, the upper or uh, lower fifty percent and the upper fifty percent of the observed values. We also note here that this is our median here, which is near three thousand. 
that's our meridian and this is the bottom 25 percent of the values here from quart quartile one to quartile two so this is um, between quartile two and quartile three which we find the mean and the median this is where the mean and the median is and this is where most of the data are actually found so this is uh, this is where it is found so the median is actually close to the quartile four and quartile three so that means uh, most of the values are actually near the uh the uh, 75 percent of the data so almost all are here this uh this values okay so just a few are here right so um, another is for the test of homogeneity, a variance says to know whether or not um, there is homogeneity. So we um, follow for the um, significant value here. So that's uh, 0.768, which is um, greater than 0 0.05. So this means that there is um, homogeneity of the variances of our um, observed values. So this is also reported here. Okay, so um, this one. So next is we analyze for the um, ANOVA. Um, uh, our ANOVA is, um, our ANOVA table tells us that the F statistic is one point, uh, F computed is actually um, 1.314 and that the uh, sig uh, significant value is, uh, P value is actually 0.284. Because the significant value is greater than um, uh, here, the p-value is greater than the set one, which we have in our hypothesis earlier here. Okay, so we have already um, set the, um, our decision rule that um, this means that it is greater than, so that means because the decision is to reject if it is less than, and because the values that we get from the ANOVA table is actually greater than, then that means that the test has failed to reject the null hypothesis. So we reported this one here. So there is no statistically significant difference between the um, treatments of the five types of rootstock as determined by one-way ANOVA. So we have the F computed value of 435, um, N is 35, uh, uh, N N for um, Q35, so we have a K35, so we have a F computed value of 1.314 and a P value of 0.284. Uh, so this test has failed to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so I have already um, performed the manual checking here. So um, this one will be submitted to along with a video of this. Um, uh, presentation. So this presentation is done through SPSS trial version. Uh, the test is titled ANOVA uh, an, um, or an one-way analysis of variance. So um, I will be um, stopping to share this one and um, we will end our uh, video for this one.